Hello. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today we're going to be doing a illuminated letter for the month of October. So I haven't planned this one out, so you're going to see my process of how I put everything together. So just popping my out chat. Oh, sorry. How I put everything together. Just popping my out chat. Out. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Just get my chat there. All right, all right, I'll sit. So, this is what we did last week, last Tuesday. And it was the, what I'm currently doing. <laughs> and that was my, uh, I got, a box of bulbs in the mail for my garden. So I put the different bulbs that were ordered and then a few leaves that were just starting to get some fall leaves right now. Um, it's kind of late actually for this area, but that's okay. Um, we did get a pretty good frost last night and the night before. So we'll probably see those leaves turn very quickly now. And on Thursday, we did a little bit more experimenting with the Akua inks. And we also did some comparisons to see what, um, how much of detail would we get with the Speedball. This is a uh, block printing ink and it was pretty good actually. So the Akua ink and the um, block printing ink are pretty well the same, I would say. Those are the two. And um, we did one with the, let's see, um, just with black acrylic paint. And it's okay, but the detail isn't as great. Where is it? Let me see. It's in here somewhere. It was a little bit less detail, I would say. I think I... Yeah. Is it this one? Might have been that one. I'm not sure. It's still, it's still pretty good, but you get more detail with the inks which is pretty well what I would expect. This one I love. You could put a drawing in here. That would be awesome. So we'll probably play with those sometime. Hey, Lena. I'm die cut. I'm die cutting, so can't be in chat much today working on a new planner set. Oh, okay. That's fine. I saw your uh, a video. I haven't had a chance to comment on it. <laughs> it was good. I loved it. You and your hubby playing in the backyard. <laughs> it was great. Um, so. I thought today we, I would uh, start off with using a piece of watercolor paper and then I'll just cut it and glue it onto this one of these pages in here. So what I typically do is it's going to be the letter O. So you can either get <clears throat> a stencil and and put your letter O in, or you can draw it in, whatever you want to do. But I usually have some kind of an idea of how I want the illuminated letter to look. So shape-wise, uh, I'm going to do it gold. Um, but I'm also going to put things around it. So I want to put in my uh, letter first, and then I'll work around it with other things. 
And I'm also going to think about stuff. What's October to me? Uh, it's about leaves, color, falling leaves, cooler temperatures. Uh, here in Canada, it's Thanksgiving. That's coming up this weekend. And apple season is another thing. Kids are back in school. Getting the garden ready for the winter. Um, kind of cozy feeling, actually, October is to me. And then you want to figure out how do you want to draw those things? Coziness. Colors is easy, but uh, what's cozy to you? So sweaters or even mittens or a, a cup of coffee or hot apple cider is a good one. So we're going to, I'm going to put in the letter O. Actually, I, I want to make sure I don't go too uh, over the page. So I'm just going to put in my line so I don't uh, draw past it so I can fit it into my drawing properly without having the drawing going past the lines when I cut it. So what I like to do is I'll put in the letter O. I know I'm going to have stuff around it so I don't want it too big. So do you want it round? Do you want it kind of an oval O? What's pleasing to your eye is also important. Um, being that it's a fairly uh, long piece of paper, this is seven inches by five inches. So maybe an oval would probably fit a little better. So let's put, hmm, I'm, I'm going to have some stuff on the top here and some stuff on the bottom. So I don't want it too uh, too big. So I'm doing the inside of the circle first. Kind of get it as even as possible. And then I, I want it fairly thick. And you can put make the letter more ornate if you want, like having little curly cues on it or Celtic design would be another thing. I don't think I'll do that today. Not to say I won't try it on another one, but I think I'm going to have more than enough uh, objects around it it doesn't really need it say so that's my my letter o now well, let's see i think i'm going to do it this way because it's a little bit more well, maybe not let's see so now, with this is a really great one to actually put in a scene in here. So I could have a like a, a tree scene coming in here. That would be kind of cool. Maybe a path coming up. Uh, it could have... Hmm, like I always associate October with fall. So falling leaves... Uh, forests, that type of thing. So I think I'm going to put a little path in here. And let's see. Might have a hill. So let's make a hill. Going over the Now we could have 
trees coming in here. So maybe we have, this is the hit edge of the hill. So you would have a few of the trees coming in here. Some would be falling down, some leaning. Forests are usually a little more, uh, they're not like trees all in a nice even row. Usually some kind of uh, trees that are broken or, you know, whatever. Make it up. That's what I'm doing. And then as we get towards you, we want the trees to be maybe a little bit bigger. So we can add some more. You can even take it past the... the O. That. And then we can have also bushes. Usually a lot of um, scrub is what we call it in there. So you have all kinds of Even on this hill here, maybe there's some other types of brush back there. So, what we're going to do, is I, I like pumpkins, um, Halloween also. So maybe we'll have a pumpkin right in here. And I'm gonna overlap it. So maybe, let's see, make it a little bigger. Maybe it's about the same shape as the O. So that shape is being Duplicate it, which is also good to do. So I can just erase any lines I don't want. We can make it uh, just as a pumpkin, or you can make it into a Halloween face, that type of thing. I might do that. We'll see. Uh, we can also add... Maybe a bird up here or um, maybe a cat peeking around the corner would be cute. Um, I don't have any reference with me right now, but um, let's see what else. Pumpkins, we could add a few more pumpkins in here. Leaves. Uh, so we could actually make this tree here a little bigger. So this is going to have a thicker branch. And then we'll just add some branches inside and outside. Let's see, that can go in. Let's take it off the page, this one. Just gives it a different look. This is just a rough sketch. Okay, like that. And then this guy. We'll have a You're seeing it from more of the top view because we're standing up so we wouldn't see it face on. So we'll just put in a 
pumpkin there. Gnarly stem. Can you guys see this okay? Let me check. On you stream. Maybe I'll bring you in a little bit till I. There we go. Okay. Thanks, Lena. And then. Let me think. I think I want a cat in here. And I think I want him um, peeking. Should I have him peeking in there? Maybe that would be kind of cool. Let's see. So. Take this out so you don't get confused. Maybe he's, um, let's see, maybe stepping in, into the, I'm not sure. I'm not, I haven't, I don't have cats, so. <laughs> this could be interesting. Let's see. He's stepping in in the, to the uh, the abyss. Like that. Um, let your paws go. I think this needs to be more. I should have a Now, if I were doing this on my own without streaming, I would be looking up uh, what this all looks like in real life. I got the haunch wrong. I'm going to have to look, look this up. Just hold on. I have to do this, guys. I can't think of how their back leg would be. So let's see. Cat. In a way, drawing. Um. Mm. 
No, I'm getting a lot of butts. <laughs> okay, there's one. It's not too bad, so. It's kind of, let's see. And then his little tail. Like that. Maybe this has to come out. His back leg maybe stretching. Like that. It's kind of a like that. He's kind of a pudgy little one, but that's okay. Let's see. I think I have the right that baby too bit too long a front leg um let me see just a minute kind of picky when it comes to proportions. I like to have it just so. I think that'll do. Okay, let me see where I am with you guys. There. Hi, Ann. Okay, so there's my cat. So there's my cat. So I don't know. I think it looks not too bad. Like that. Uh, 
There's my... What else can we put in here? We could put falling leaves in. Could have a crow on here. Maybe... There. Let's bring this over here like this. It's always nice to overlap your branches because that's just the way they look in nature. They're not all evenly spaced. Okay, so this would be down like that. And then we'll have a crow in here. Now I probably have a actually I have a stencil that I could probably use for that. And it'll be just a silhouette. So then we can have like oh all kinds of leaves and whatnot. We could have another pumpkin in here. Um, we could have, actually, let's put some corn husks in here. So, just a little bundle. that. Okay. And yeah, we'll just have some leaves in around here. All right, I think we'll start off with that. I think that looks pretty good. We'll leave the pumpkin as is. So we'll start off with the um, inside. So it's going to be kind of a gloomy day. Um, a lot of our days in the fall are usually overcast. So let's get some few brushes out here. Chris, oh, lurking up bit today, having a great day, everyone. Oh, I realized I have been spelling your last name wrong. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I have a number eight and a number four. Uh, this is a silver black velvet uh, watercolor brush. Now I'm going to make my background. This is watercolor paper. It's just a uh, 140 pound. And I'm just going to wet this inside around the cat though. I don't want the cat to have any water on it. And the letter also I'd like to remain a dry. So just wetting So it's going to be kind of a gloomy forest or misty, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to put a little bit of yellow. I'm going to add a little bit of sienna. I guess I should show you my palette here. So you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Uh, a little bit of red in there. And maybe a little blue. 
I kind of want it dulled down. That green. And then I want um, some CN or um, French ultramarine here and some burnt umber. So I want an, a kind of a grayish color. And then kind of muddy looking. So I, I haven't cleaned my palette, but that's fine. But I want it really watered down to start. And I'm just going to put a little bit Of this color in and mostly on the bottom here. I'm going to leave this patch over here for a little bit of um, highlight. So we can add a little bit of that yellow. Let's see if I can. Uh, I'm going to have to. We need another palette. We're gonna have to wipe this one. I'm not gonna use purple. Just so I get a cleaner color. A little bit of ochre. And then I'm just going to highlight a little area here with yellow. Just a bit. It's very, very, very um, slight. Very weak. Okay. Now with this uh, umber color, I'm going to put in some of these trees. So it's still wet. And it's going to flare out or bloom. That's fine because that will kind of show mm, twigs on the trees, that type of thing. We'll have a little bit of darker area on the bottom where the trees will um, meet. Now we can take a little bit of that green also because it would still have green in it on your um, ground here and there. Maybe a little bit in the trees, but not much. This is going to be our background. I'm going to add a little bit more of that color in here. This is the pathway. Okay. Now I'm going to dry that with a heat gun. All right. Okay, so now we can add a little bit of um, more details here. 
So we can take this gray again and uh, go over our trees a little bit more. So we can either add a bunch more. These ones are going to be a little more detailed, so they're not going to be as blurry. So just use the tip of your brush because they wouldn't be very uh, noticeable as far as thickness. Here. Let's make a little bit more of that color again, but a little bit thicker in pigment. It's a little darker. I'm going to use this uh, Payne's Gray and the Umber. Okay, now I'm going to do this tree. Now I'm probably going to go in with some ink, so I'm not too worried about getting texture yet. And I'm not going to go all the way to the edge of the tip of the branch because I'm going to use ink to make those really thin outlines that you would see. This one would have a little bit more on it. And I'm going to make a little bit of um, the bottom of the trunk of the tree. And they can be crooked. A lot of times you will see trees that are kind of wonky looking. So the ones closest to you will be darker. All right, we'll let that dry and then let's do this uh, corn here. So the corn's going to be kind of uh, more on the raw sienna or yellow ochre. And it can be kind of dirty looking too uh, with maybe a little green in it, a little black in it or grays because it gets kind of uh, moldy or from all the rain coming on it and it's losing its color. It's going to add a little bit of that, put it in here, here and there. Let's just darken that area. A little bit more Payne's Gray to that, some more Umber. I'm not um, doing a lot of detail with the paint. Okay, this one, this one tree here is probably the closest, so I'm going to add a little bit more color. So it's a little bit closer to you. Okay. Now we got the cat. Well, we have to have him black, right? So let's make a really dark color. Really dark. So we got this umber color and Payne's gray. That'll make a nice dark 
color. And we can go in with a uh, colored pencil or gouache. to uh, add highlights, that type of thing. I'm just using the very tip of my brush. So you want to find a brush that's fairly pointy. Um, these are fairly economical. Like I think you can get them in packs of three. They're not very expensive and they last a long, long time. So I have this tree in front of him. So that's why I want the cat to be a little bit on the dark side. So he sticks out. Now you could leave them as just a silhouette too. You don't have to do detail on them. It's up to you. Hey Dot. Good, Chris. Yeah, taking your time to get into the watercolor. You won't be disappointed. And there's, it doesn't matter how you, well you do it, there's always something new to learn about the, the um, medium. And that goes with any medium, drawing, whatever it is. You're never uh, finished with learning. <laughs> Say the pumpkin, we'll do orange. So let's do this um, pyrrole orange. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of sienna. Because I don't want it really bright. Okay, but I want a little bit of water down. And we'll add that. And then we'll do some highlights and shadows. You could leave the shadow or highlights in this white paper, or you could just uh, put some gouache on. It's up to you. The stem is usually that ochre color, too, and maybe a little bit of green in it. And we'll add a little bit of detail with some pen work. Alrighty, I'm going to add a little bit more green here and there, more or less kind of bushes. I'm just going to dab more or less on the um, borders where the uh, those lines are for the hills. And you can mix it up as far as um, you can add some orange in there because it would have some colorful leaves in some areas. Just going to add
Let me get a little bit in here. Might be some uh, green still left on the, some of the leaves or. A little bit of green around here. And then a little bit of that gray again. And I'm just gonna put some marks in where the road is, or the pathway, I guess you could say just to make it a little bit more noticeable. And maybe a little bit more on those leaf, on the trees back here while it's wet. Um, we could take a little bit of blue in that sky. This is dry now, so we can just put a, a little bit of water and then some cerulean blue. Just dab along the top there. Not much. And it won't go green because you've dried the, um, the paint before. Okay. Now let's do a little bit of this orange, maybe add a little bit of that mixture so it's more on the umber side. And we'll just put a little bit of blotches representing the uh, leaves. So some areas would have a little bit more color on the ground too, but not, a, not as much um, as the color of the, of the leaves that were on top. And a little bit more green. So just mix it up more. You can see some green through those leaves. In there. Okay. Now I'm just going to a smidge in the the uh, corn husk here, just a bit. Canna? Yeah, it's fine. So we can uh, add some water around the pumpkin now. And do the same thing. Stab. Let things run. Be a little bit darker under the cat and under the pumpkin. We can add a little bit of darker color in there and under the letter too. Just a bit of shadow.
And then the pumpkin has the ribs in it. So you have a shadow around those ribs. I just make a, um, some dashes, not a straight line. That looks a little nicer. Um, then we'll put a little bit of that. I'm just going to dab. You can mix it up too. They don't have to be all the same color. But I'm just going to make some leaves clusters. You know how sometimes, um, not all the time, but sometimes the leaves kind of get stuck on the tree and they don't fall off right away different colors sometimes, golds and just dab. Make some more definite ones down here, a little more. Some green, a bit of green. Okay, let that dry. Just gonna add a little bit of darker green in here along the edge of that path. Just a bit. All right, so let's dry this. Looking pretty good. All right, so now we can take a pen. Now you want to use a water permanent, so it's like a Sharpie or um, 
micron, that type of thing. I like using a fairly uh, small nib. So this is a, a 0 0.03. This aside for now. Take my sweater off. I'm hot. Is everyone feeling fallish today? I'm wearing. <laughs> yep. It's nice and cool here. We had frost, so it's a sure sign that summer's over. Okay, so let's do a little bit more detail in here. So I'm going to um, actually, do you want me to, I'll bring you guys in a little bit so you can see the drawing part. So it's a fairly small nib and trees are rough. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to bring this tree down right into here. And we'll highlight him just to bring it, him out a little bit. A lot of times you have little saplings coming up from the edge of the tree line. So you can put some of those in. Be all kinds of little sticks and little bushes or saplings starting. Don't make uh, too many in the background though, because that was uh, has to stay a little bit lighter because it's atmospheric. So you wouldn't necessarily see uh, dark areas back there. It's more lighter. But then we can add Your tree line. I like doing kind of scribbly. We'll bring that out here. So let's do just a few in between the, these um, blotches of paint that represent tree uh, leaves. crisscrossing too. Don't have them all, you know. They'd be losing some of their um, leaves and they'd be bare branches also. So you can put a few of those in. Cross over too. They're not all lined up. Maybe this one goes up. Like that. little bit bits of marks along the road here or pathway too okay so this little cat here 
think we're going to do a little bit of outlining. So I can see my graphite line still in here. I'm just going to erase those. Same with uh, the corn. I can probably erase some of those. Don't erase your letters, though, because you want to have to redo that. Okay. Sometimes it comes off through the uh, watercolor, depending on how many coats you put on. Okay, like that. So now a little bit of a white pen. Mm, let's see what I got here. It's a jelly roll. Now I know I'm not going to be painting on the cat. So what I'm going to do is um, right around here, I you know how much this is going to. This will actually, I think I'm going to try the Zig Paint uh, ink. This is uh, the white Zig Paint ink. It's very thick, so sometimes you have to put a little bit of water on. So I'm just going to. Spray that, and you want um, either a dip pen. Let's see. Um, I know I have one somewhere. So I'm just dipping my pen. I'll test it out on paper first. Just got to get it going. This is fairly uh, thick. And I don't want it too thick. testing it off the side here. I don't know if I'll be able to get this going or not. The best pen. I don't think this oh, might work. Let's see. a little bit on the top of his head and his ear. Just a bit on that one side. Like that. OK, 
Kathy, is there a printable on this on your membership? Uh, I don't have one right now, but I will make one. Uh, it'll probably be up later t um, this evening. Okay, so now I'm going to just do a little bit of pen work on the bottom here. So there'd be a little bit of darker areas right in those creases. Same with the... Um, the stem is usually pretty gnarly looking. So you can make some lines in there. That. And then his little whiskers, I'm just going to put a few like that. Okay. So now we can put in that those um, corn stalks. So be some shadowed areas where... They're kind of stuck together, so there'd be shadowed areas. Maybe on one side. those little fuzzies on the top. That. And you can uh, shadow or do as much detail or just leave it. Depends on how you want to do it. Your painting. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm just gonna add a few more little doodads here. Maybe these are little bushes. Could be. Just make it interesting. A little bit of. Uh, not heavy though. All right. Then just follow some of these leaves, uh, like underneath. So give them a little bit of a shadow just on the underneath side of them, and that'll help bring them out a little bit. So don't do the top parts, just the underneath. So it's kind of like a shadow. 
you can follow the shape of the color that's there or make a, a real looking leaf if you want. So it would be a bunch of different colors maybe together. Just put a suggestion of leaves, basically. Now along here be a little darker. So depending on how you want to handle that, you could add another wash of say a real watered down um, gray or uh, Payne's gray would do. Alrighty, then we can also, let's take our smaller brush here. Let's do a little bit of alizarin crimson with that orange that we had and maybe a little bit of that um, muddy color. We want it a little darker so we can uh, just make some shadows on this here because they would be not all the same color of orange. We would have a little bit of a different color. You could even add yellow to that and it'll brighten the orange up in sections. Maybe on the top. And then maybe a bit of gouache. It's a highlight just to lighten it up a little bit. Or you could take a um, colored pencil. Let's do colored pencil when it's dry. All right, so let's do um, gold. So I have these gold watercolors here and I think I want it to be a nice rich gold so maybe this one here this dark one I'm gonna just wet it let it dry or not dry but soak in there a little bit so it gets nice and thick And then we'll do the uh, the O. It's nice and thick. Now you could use whatever color you want to do. I like the gold. You could do black too if you have a sparkly black. That might, or even do um, embossing would be cool too. Hmm. That would be cool. Should I do embossed? I wonder what colors I got. I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna get my embossing out and see what I got. You never know.
black. Silver. Then Hmm. Oh, I bet he would look adorable. Um, okay, so I do have, but it's black. I kind of want, I don't have any gold embossing powder, I don't think. So I think I'm going to stick with the paint. We'll just paint this. Right. You could use a, um, a a gold pen or a marker too if you wanted to. But I have these paints and I want to use them. I have a lot of stuff that you know you just it gets collected and then you forget about it or it's something that you don't typically use a whole lot of now the nice thing about watercolors is they don't really go bad So will any of you doing a fall journal or Halloween? Art in, in some way? Or maybe you don't like Halloween. Some people don't like Halloween. This is a really nice, um, rich, almost coppery gold. Very pretty. You like fall? Yeah, I love fall. Fall and spring, I think, are my favorite times. Not crazy about, um, 
probably the mid-July to uh, the end of August. Too hot. Flowers are kind of... Um, depending on what type of flowers, they start to dwindle, at least around here. I tend to have more on the June to mid-July flowers, and then after that, not a whole lot. <laughs> All right, so yeah, pretty I'm just starting on my Halloween journal. Sorry, I don't know, okay. Hey Shelly. Yeah, I'll take you guys out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. There you go. All right. So now, I can take a uh, bright yellow, maybe. Let's see if this is light enough. It might be a little lighter. Give it a little bit of highlight. The tops here be a little bit lighter. With the bright orange. Let's see. I like using colored pencils over top of watercolor. I think it really adds. And then Launch. And a little bit of gray underneath here. just because it would be a little bit shadowed. <laughs> so I'm assuming that this is a dimensional letter. <laughs> it's casting a shadow. This little guy would have a little bit of shadow in here too. A little more around here. That. Actually, some black to do. Let's see. Is that black? Put a little bit of black under his tail. There.
Here. A little bit under his feet. Uh, remember, a lot um, nice contrast, really uh, enhances uh, drawing. Maybe the, which way is the shadow in here? Maybe, uh, maybe it's behind these trees. So these trees would be a little bit darker because it would be more like a silhouette. But then you got to remember, um, you don't want them too dark because then you lose the around the cat. Uh, let's see. I think this needs to be shown a little bit. Just putting a little bit of a shadow around this letter on the inside. It just shows a little bit more like that. Doesn't have to be a lot. So the light would be coming like this. So that's why his head is uh, got a bit of a shadow. So over here, he would also have a shadow. A little bit. So let's put a little bit of a shadow on there. Like so. That way gives it dimension. Maybe a little bit under here from the cat. Not much, just a little bit. Maybe a little under the, the uh, any of the leaves that are draping over that letter would have a shadow. Where did I put that? There it is. I forgot to put one in. Right. And let's put a little uh, bird in there, a raven of some sort. Um, where? Oh, I guess I can draw one in. So, where would I put him? Maybe right here. So maybe he's a 
might have to it's not going over top of that We'll have to use some black marker. Black marker. Or paint marker. Here's our raven. You can just be a silhouette. Mm, I think I'm going to put a darker line over here. I think it needs to be darker. Might have to do the paint, yeah. Let's see. Uh. And then in here, Like that. And this looks a little bit wonky. I'm going to bring this out a little bit. What else can we do here? Maybe, well, you could always brighten up some of these leaves if you want. A little bit of colored pencil. Why not? You could even um, have some white. I'm just going to put a little bit of white on the like that. Not much. Okay. Maybe a few more 
little dabs here and there of, could be a few leaves, whatever. Don't put them all through the areas though, because you gotta remember this is uh, further away, so you're not gonna see the detail that, that you would um, in this other part. Okay, so there. I think it looks pretty good. All right. Um, I don't think I need any other highlights on anything else. Hey, Dar. That's kind of a bronzy colored gold. It's pretty. Right, so I think that one is done. So let's date it. Where did I put my other? It is. So today is the fourth. So ten oh four twenty two. And then we can cut it and put it in our my book. Okay, so I will draw this up for you. And I'll put it in the uh, members community page. And uh, you can find that there. And download it. It's usually in uh, Google Docs that I put it in. And uh, you can try it for yourself. See what you can do with it. Change up the colors or add a little something more to it. Get out a scarecrow. You could put all kinds of stuff in there. So I'll let you guys go and you have a fantastic rest of the day. Get your sketchbooks out, do some sketching. And if you're interested in getting any of these and um, many, many, many more uh, printables or other uh, more in-depth tutorials, you can check out the join button down below for YouTube, or you can also uh, go on my Patreon, and the Patreon has changed as far as the uh, payment. It's now you will be billed the day you pay, and that day from then on. So, thank goodness for that. So, I'll let you guys go, and you have a fantastic day. Bye for now. <laughs>